Hey guys, I've never done anything like this before. It could be a total fail. I'm sorry in advance. You can also hear my son who is watching some sort of YouTube video about Minecraft, which is their favorite thing. I wanted to show you what happens whenever I scan in my art and put it into my computer and get it digital ready. So the scanner that I use is the Epson Perfection v600 photo and it is true to color it's pretty awesome so it cost me two hundred dollars i think which is the best investment that i've made so far in my business if that's what you want to call it um so here is the piece and you can see that the color is not very white but the paper is not white either so what we need to do the first thing we need to do is get it ready by getting the background completely white. And I know that many people have different ways of doing this and there is no right or wrong way. This is the way that I found um, that helps it keep it um, not, I don't, know the, I don't know the right term except that it's, it makes it pure color and pure white without compromising the color. Does that make sense? So first thing I'm going to do is I need to change the dimensions up here. Hang on, let me get over here so you can see it. And I'm gonna put it at an eight, an eight by 10 because that's what it is originally. So with eight inches by 10 inches and resolution 300, and then I'm going to crop it so that we can get out all of this extra space. So I'll crop. make sure that it looks good oh and my kids might be coming in and bugging me in a minute because i told them we were going to toys r us to spend babysitting money today so pardon me if there's little little kids coming up okay so that looks like a good crop so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create a duplicate layer oh and i'm in photoshop by the way so create a duplicate layer so that whatever changes i make are done on that layer because we're gonna need that under layer especially because this piece has a lot of tones that are super close to white and so whenever we st start removing that white background it's going to remove some of this color and we have to fix that which I'll explain so um, I created a background copy of oh, you hear him <laughs> hey give me like five minutes guys okay okay so Next, I'm going to make adjustments, and so image adjustments, and then go down to replace color. When I get to replace color, I'm gonna click on the white background, and it, oh wait, hang on, you need to be able to see. Over here, it shows, <clears throat> man, I need to pull back a little, I'm sorry, guys. Let's see if that helps any. So. I'm clicking on the white and you can see here that it shows um, color. If I clicked here, it's gonna only pop up this color. If I click here, it's gonna pop up that. So I wanna keep my fuzziness also low, which just tells you um, what, it picks a color and then it takes the color closest to it. If I were to do fuzziness like 119, then it would select way too much and change way too much of it. So I want to go at like 19 or 20. So I'm clicking the image and then I'm going to go down to lightness and I'm going to go all the way up. And what that does is brightens the background. Can you see the difference? I'm not sure you can. Yeah, you can. It immediately brightens that background. So I'm gonna hit okay. Now I'm gonna scroll in and show you that you might be able to see here. Do you see there's still like a gray fuzzy right there? So what we need to do now is redo. We're gonna just do that over and over again. So I'm gonna click on a color. Oh, and it pulled up a lot more of the color that time. And I'm gonna pull, toggle all the way over and do it over and over again until we have a purely white background and I'll show you how we know we've got a purely white background. So then I'm going to test my color by 
Sorry, I have to keep moving my computer around. I'm gonna go over to this button right here and I'm gonna click on the background and you'll see here that it's showing FFFF, which means that that is a completely white background here. So I'm gonna test other areas and see other areas are all showing that it's white, but I'm gonna go over here and check out and see what else we've got. So if you look in really closely, you can see that there's a little gray outline and I'm not sure I want that because I want my image to be super crisp. So I will, again, go into replace color and it make make too many changes. You can see here that it's gonna start removing the color on some of my leaves and such. And so it may not be worth doing, but I'll do it to show you. So I'm gonna have to do that a couple times because that color was pretty dark. I need to get it all the way to white. Yeah, and that fixed that problem. And let's see what else we've got. Okay, so now look here. You can see how the color has been pixelated. That's because I've removed the color that was closest to it around that other flower that I didn't want the color there, but I do want the color here. So that's where the background layer really comes in handy. I'm kind of scrolling around all of this to make sure and definitely here you can see how poorly the color is gone. We'll fix all of that. And here, we'll have to fix that too. But, oh, and this was a flaw. You probably can't see it. This is a flaw on my screen from it being dirty. Gotta keep our scanners clean. Okay. So the background is completely white and that actually was a lot faster than sometimes. It takes much longer because the edges are, are really dirty, but this time it was pretty clean. So next I'm going to take my eraser tool and I'm going to erase the top layer to reveal the bottom layer where this color is still intact. So I'm going to make it small and if you see, I'm bringing back the color and I would of course use a smaller tool for the edges and I also use a hard on hard a hard edge so that sorry my kids are now mad at each other use a hard edge um, so that the fade isn't there we don't want to see that okay I'm gonna leave this part alone um, just because I want to go back with a separate, smaller tool. Man, they're really mad at each other down there. And this is a pretty tedious process sometimes whenever, like, for example, I just did this image last night, and do you see all this gray? Whenever I start going in to remove the white background, it's going to remove a lot of this, so... That's going to be a hard one to do, and which is another reason why you don't see a lot of the stuff that I do is mostly bold color. It's just easier to edit. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are watching. I really can't even see, and if you have questions, I'm sorry. I can't see that either. Okay, here's another part, and I think I might move on in a second. Well, no, I really do need to finish because I need to show you um, how to saturate the color and, and get it more true to the original, but I want to finish it first without, because skipping a step is really hard. This is where it's going to get really difficult, and sometimes where I just have to, like, take a break and come back, because I don't, you can see the before and after. I can't, I don't want to have to repaint that whole thing and just make something up and so I have to make it look as close to the original as possible without looking like I drew it on. Does that make sense? Like these little rough edges here, I want those to be there because that's true to the original, but it's tedious. So I'm gonna scroll way in 
and then get a really fine point, like at a five, and go in like that. And sometimes it's just not gonna be perfect. So there's a little thingy here, I've gotta fix that. It might be as good as we can get. If you mess up, you just hit the back button. Okay, now I'm gonna to go to a bigger tool just to make it faster. And I don't have my mouse with me right now, which my sister, who's a graphic designer, is probably um, cringing because I don't know how I do this with a mouse pad, but I do. I'm just gonna create some serious carpal tunnel. Okay, I think I'm almost done. Oops, I forgot there's an edge there. That's so funny. <laughs> that edge is gonna be interesting to edit. You've got to get the straight line. Okay. Is there a fast forward button? Because I'm sure you guys don't want to watch this. But I really need to finish it before I move on to the next step. So hang tight. So there's a little bit of pixelation there, and that's okay. All right, what else? Let's look back and see. This all looks good. That does not look good. I still need to fix some of these places, but let me just look over everything first. Actually, let's just pretend that those tiny pieces that I missed are done. No, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Hang tight, guys. Let's hit that um, background copy and see what it looks like. That's okay. And then just this tiny little bit down here and I'll be done, promise. Okay. I'm gonna show you before and after. Here's before and here's after, and that's just with the color background removal. So now it's completely white. Now, another thing that a lot of people do is they go into image and then adjustments and, no, what do they do? They go, this is what they do. They hit the, over here eraser tool and they do a magic eraser um, and let me show you on this image what happens when you do that okay so we do magic eraser and then they just click on it and it erases the background completely so that also in um, in printer settings acts as FFFFF which is complete white which is all fine and good, except when you start zooming in, you see how hard these edges are right here. I'll show you. Especially with my type of art, it's um, it's so loose that the, the lines are never perfect. And around the edge here, you can see a little color. And that little color is what messes it up whenever you try to go to print because then you can see the color and then a little fade around the edge, which is not what I want. I want it to look exactly like what I painted. 
And so then if you were to click that again, it'll start removing it, but at varying levels. And so with the background removal, it's fine if you if you don't care what your edges look like. And then also you have to worry about like, what do we do on the inside? Because the inside has, um, has all of these white spaces too. And so it's, it just, I don't prefer that method. So anyway, back to this method. Here's before and after of just the color. And if I show you the original, which probably won't be able to tell, um, here's the original, <laughs> la la. So the colors are actually pretty nice. I think I'm just gonna boost the color a little bit to make it um, a little more saturated. So all I do, a lot of people use curves, but I just prefer levels. You go into levels and I'm just gonna toggle this down a tiny little bit. If you go here, that's way too dark for me. Some people like their stuff super saturated, <laughs> super saturated, but I prefer it just to be bumped up a little bit. So too dark, not enough. I think my color is somewhere at like 15. And then you can click preview and see before and after. Actually, I think I want to do less. And maybe I always err on the side of caution, but I like softness. No, let's go back to like 13. Okay. Another thing you can do is you can um, get some of that milkiness out of these colors. Okay, so Arches Paper is a milky color. It's not a bright, bright, true white. And so whatever color you have here, whenever you remove the white around it, this color is still going to have that milky white underneath it. Does that make sense? So if I wanted to, I could go up here and brighten it up so that that milkiness is more, um, is gone. But I actually prefer that. I just want to, I prefer the natural white underneath instead of bright. But I just wanted to show you what it looks like when you do that. So here's before and after. And I actually think that I'm done. So many times I'll go in, check the edges to make sure I didn't miss something. Like over here <laughs> with my little flaw on the scanner, I've got to go fix that. Um, oh, you know what I didn't do? I'm so sorry. Okay, wait, hang on. I need to undo those levels and I need to flatten my image first. Whoops. Some of you probably caught that, huh? And then I need to change that saturation because what it was doing was only changing what we had done in the background and not those little things that we had fixed. So anyway, going here, I'm going to hit the 13, I think was what I decided on. Yeah. And then I can go in and fix that one little problem that I had down here. Oh, and you can see on the edges, I also have to erase that. And because my background is now perfectly white, all I have to do is eraser tool all of those parts that I forgot. And then I just check all the edges and then I hit save as and I'm done. So I don't know if any of you are in that time of your career where you're starting to edit your images and get them ready for um, digital prints or if you've if you have an Etsy shop or anything, but I hope that the information that I've given you helps. And if you have any questions, feel free to message me. But if you're watching, thanks so much.